Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Wizardry Workshop. In this video, we are going to be making some wand boxes. And yes, I did do a wand box tutorial a couple of years ago, but I know I can do better. Also, I'm still putting together my shelves behind me and one section is gonna be for wands and I wanted to make it look like sort of like an Ollivander's wand shop type thing where there's a whole bunch of wand boxes in there. I used to do unboxings for uh, Geek Gear Wizardry, which had wands in them and also unique wands, which was purchased, I think, by Geek Gear. So they had it for a while. I don't know if they still do it or not, but I have a bunch of these like unique wands boxes. So yeah, here's a whole bunch of them. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to be actually transforming these boxes into basically movie prop replicas. But don't worry, if you don't have these boxes, I'm also going to show you how to make one that's exactly the same size and put together pretty much exactly the same way. And yes, every single one of these still has a wand in it too. If you are new here, I do a whole bunch of Harry Potter uh, DIYs on my channel and I try to make them easy enough to do at home. Anyways, if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and also give this video a like if you do enjoy it. Down there, you're also going to find links to all the supplies that I use for this DIY as well as the free downloadable templates. And let's get started. So you, the Unique Wands boxes are pretty easy to make and work with. They don't require any tape or glue, just the way they fold, they actually turn into this shape, which is really nice. I really enjoy these boxes though. And this is the official box from Noble Collection. And it's just a lot nicer. It, it looks like leather. And then it also has these like ribbon parts that open up to show your wand right there, and this is Harry Potter's wand. Um, and then we also have sort of a nice fabric in here with a, a soft sides for the wand to fit like right in the middle there. It's really nice. Whereas the Unique Wands boxes are, they have this really hard plastic piece in here that's holding the wand in. And it's just a, you know, like a cheap plastic thing. But the wands themselves are pretty cool. Anyways, we're gonna sort of combine the idea of these two boxes in this video. Before we start, you'll need to print the templates. So we have these wand labels, and these are replicas of the wand labels actually seen in the movie. So these are actually my replica designs of what they used in the film. I uh, used images from books that I have, as well as things that I found online, in order to make these look as much like the movie as possible. So you'll want to print a sheet of these. You can print them on sticker paper if you want. I just printed mine on regular paper. And you're also going to want the wand box templates. So these are designed to look sort of like a leather texture. We have brown. We also have blue, green, and yellow. These, as you can see, are printed on large paper. These are printed on 11 by 17 paper. However, I do have regular standard size paper templates for you to download. However, there's gonna be more cutting and more putting together with those. So let's start out just by cutting all the white space off of these templates here. You can use whatever you want to accomplish this. I'm just gonna use a ruler and X-Acto knife so that I can get these edges nice and straight. Now I will be rebranding the Unique Wands box, but I'm gonna show you how you can make your own box, which is pretty much exactly the same. And we're gonna use these templates that I created. First of all, on both of these, we wanna cut right here where it kinda cuts off right here. We wanna cut off that entire side, get it as close to the edge as possible. And I printed mine on cardstock. And again, there will be smaller format paper. I'm using 11 by 17. There will be eight and a half by 11 templates as well. Now we're gonna do the same thing here and just cut off everything past where that these lines stop. And now you should have like two halves to the box here. And there is a dotted line on this side and that shows you where this lines up. So you overlap them until this page hits that dotted line. And that is your template right there. You need to glue these together in the middle. We'll just put glue 
all the way up to that dotted line. Glue these two halves together. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim off all this bulk on the edges before I get into the detailed parts here. Then I'll use my scissors to actually cut all the detailed parts. Some of you who have already seen some of my videos before are probably asking yourselves or asking me, why aren't you using your Cricut to cut this out? I wanted to do it so that people without a Cricut could easily make this. So that's why I'm showing you the manual way here. But there is a Cricut template. So if you have a Cricut, you wanna do it that way, you can do it that way. And now we have the box top finished. We also have to do that same exact thing for the bottom of the box because they are slightly different um, in size. And with the top and bottom, you will not have to do that again for a while unless these get destroyed because these are now your templates. You can use them on whatever material you want, basically. Like let's say you're using a cardboard or some type of chipboard or something that's thick. You can just trace this and then cut it out. I'm not gonna do that because it's pretty self-explanatory, but what I am gonna do is show you how to fold it. However, I'm gonna be using these stencils that we just cut out just be, to save some time. So we will fold this flap in like this. And we'll also do that with the other two flaps. We're gonna fold them in just because we want that crease there and try to get it Oh, as straight across as you can. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but it's always good to get things nice and straight. So I'll use my cutting board or cutting mat just to follow along that straight line. There, so now all those flaps have a fold. We're gonna do that on the other side as well. Next, we will make a long fold. And to do longer folds, I like to take a ruler and just place it where I want the fold to be. You could even, I mean, you could fold now, but if you have a scoring tool, it really does help for these longer folds. So I just uh, made a little tiny indent in this, which is gonna make it a lot easier to fold over. So I really do recommend a scoring tool of some kind what I have here is a Cricut scoring tool. Let's do that on both sides. And then also to both sides, what we're gonna do is go right in between each one of those little flaps and go ahead and make a fold in between each one of these little flaps. So from this top one all the way down to that bottom one, we need a long fold there. And then again, between these two flaps, we will need another long fold here. So I'm just gonna score those first. I'm gonna score this side too. Make folds where we just scored. Okay, so now we will unfold that. And then there's just a couple more we need to do. So right along these flaps, and we're gonna do this to both sides again, you need to fold right at where these guys are. So we're gonna fold right there, and then right where it starts to angle in, you wanna fold right there as well. So it'll look like this. Do one fold there and one fold there, and then we'll unfold it. So do that to this side as well. With all of these folds done, we can now make our box. This fold right here, we're going to fold up and we'll do the same thing on this side. These flaps fold in on top like that on both sides. We can fold up toward the center of the box. And we'll do that on both sides again. So now we should be right here. And this is where the box sort of comes together. This flap 
will fold over these two, take these flaps that are already folded down and kind of pop them up like that over top of this flap. So let's try that on both sides and then it should sort of hold that box shape without any type of glue or tape. Now I will pop those flaps up above and there, there it is. The top of the box folds the exact same way. It's just a little bit larger so it'll fit over the bottom. And then once you have your top and your bottom, they fit perfectly together. Now let's go ahead and get into the uh, part of the tutorial that's going to be fun. I'm going to take all the insides out of this box. I am going to save this card though because they're really cool and they tell you a little bit about the wands. So I'm going to save that. For the bottom, I am going to use this craft paper. And if you don't have craft paper, you can really just use a brown paper bag from the grocery store or anything. But I've got this big roll of craft paper, so that's what I'm going to use. So I just kind of look at it, make sure I cut off a piece that's big enough to do this. It's almost like wrapping a present. Now we are going to cut this down to size, but first, and I'm showing you this because you may be trying this on a different size box, so this is kind of how we're going to do it. I'm just going to sort of make folds right along here, just like that. And then I'm going to do that same thing down here. I'm just using that box to see where my folds should go. It's a lot faster than like meticulously measuring everything out. And then we can do that same thing right along this side. And again, for those longer sides, you might want to use a ruler and get the ruler right up against it right there and then make your fold just to make sure it's the right size. Then we want to take it and fold it around to the inside. You can also take your scoring tool and sort of tuck it with that so that we can see where that folds in. I'm going to take a paper clamp and clamp that on and then I can do that same thing with this side. If you don't have a scoring tool to tuck that, you could also use a wand or the dull end of a paintbrush. Now we can open that up and you can see where all those creases are. And then next I'm gonna do that same exact thing on the short edges. And now with all of our creases in here, we can kind of see what shape we need this to be. Now outside of all of your different creases, you want to go out by just a little bit, like maybe a half inch or so. There's no real need to measure that. It doesn't need to be perfect. You're not gonna see it anyway. We just need a little bit extra on the outside. Now, in order to get it to actually like go in here and actually fold, we are gonna have to make a couple of cuts. So one, we're going to make a cut right here going down toward this corner and another one toward this corner. We'll do that on both of those short sides. I'm clamping this again. I like to keep it clamped because that way I know I'm not like uh, doing too much or too little. It's going to be nice and snug when I'm finished. Now we need to make a couple more cuts here. So if I fold that up and over right here, this corner, I need to cut in toward that corner from the top. And then I can cut all the way over down toward it like this. And you can actually trim that this piece down a little bit too, maybe about halfway. So right there is what we have. Now let's go ahead and do that to all four corners. And then we can fold it around on here and just make sure that it's all gonna fit. So let's do one long side first and clamp it. And then we'll do the other long side 
like this and we'll clamp that too. Now on the edges right here where we have these little flaps that we made, they fold in first and then this guy folds up and around just like that. So it should look like this. And as long as that happens and you can't see any of the old box or the box that you're using, you're good. So we're gonna glue it in exactly like I just folded it. I am using a glue stick. You can use whatever you want. So I'll cover the entire middle of this template that we just made with glue. And then I'm also going to go ahead and start this side. And I might as well go ahead and start this side as well. And these. And now we can line our box up and put it in. The good thing about a glue stick is you have some time to sort of move it and adjust it. And then we can smooth that down. And now we can continue adding glue to our flaps. and fold it in. And then we do that to the other side as well. Make sure you get it nice and tucked into all of these uh, edges. Put some glue on those two small flaps that we made and fold them in. have a little extra on top, you can trim that. And now we can finish off this side just like this. So it should look like that. Let's go ahead and finish that off on this side as well. And of course the train has to come by while I'm recording. You can try and smooth out any wrinkles that you might have. Air bubbles, you might have air bubbles in there like I do. But I think this looks totally fine right here, just like that. So there's the bottom all reskinned. Re and then for the top of the box, oh, that was the top. So that whole thing you just saw was me doing the top instead of the bottom, but it's exactly the same. So just do that, but with the bottom. Now we'll move on to the top and pretend that uh, that brown paper isn't on it. So for this, we will do it a little bit differently. We've got one piece that covers pretty much the whole top, but as but it doesn't go all the way. So that's why we have these extra pieces for each side. Make sure there is enough room for it to fold over and in. We're just gonna go ahead and glue right here. And then we can put that in about as far as we had it right there. And that should be good. Now we just need to make a few little creases just so that we know where to cut. Up and over. And there we go. We can cut this one in, and this is gonna be basically the same thing we did. And now we can start by gluing these sides in. So they just go up and over, and we're doing basically, I mean, it's the same thing that we did on the bottom part. We're just doing it with a smaller little piece here to make sure it gets, all gets covered when we're done. And when you do it and you have your glue on there, it's actually a good idea to take it, set it on your table like this, push down and then just sort of slide it across. And that helps make it nice and smooth on this side. With those sides done, the rest is pretty easy on top here. Um, we're just gonna trim this down to be just about the same width so we're gonna cut off about this much right here. 
So just measure that. It should be about 14 and a half inches wide. And if you're using the smaller template, the 11 or eight and a half by 11 template, then you'll actually be gluing more of these together to, to make it long enough to fit across here. But anyway, we're just going to place this in the middle and then it's gonna fold over and in. Pretty simple. One thing you might be thinking is you could just glue this texture down flat on top of whatever material you might be using, then cut out the box and assemble it and you're good. The problem with that is if you glue it down, when you start folding this, it's going to pull at it, it may rip in the seams, or it may just not cover it completely because you glued it down first. It just doesn't work, I've tried it. So that's why I am doing it this way. But feel free to do it however you want. Let me know if you have success. So there we have the top of the box. Um, you can see it doesn't look perfect, especially on the inside you can see this. And I've got a little tear right there. I went a little too hard with this tool here. That's okay, I'm glad it was on the inside because we can cover that up. So just make sure they fit together, and they do. See, we've got our bottom, and then there's our top. So it's actually looking pretty good right now. It looks like a little leather box, which is what we're going for. To cover up this little tear, we're not really gonna see it very well because I am gonna line just this middle part with some of this craft paper, so it's gonna just be brown in there. But if you wanna cover it up just to make sure it never actually is visible, I'm gonna use some of this Distress ink. This is Distress Oxide uh, Ground Espresso. It is a dark brown color, so I'm just gonna get some on a brush and just try and cover that up a bit. Now here's what it looks like where that tear was. You can barely see it. So that works pretty well. And then we can do the same thing with this part right here. We're just going to put a little bit of this brown right on top to sort of cover up that, those scuffs. And once that dries, it'll be even better. Now we just need to cut a piece out that fits inside of here. So this piece will need to be about two and a half inches by 14 and a quarter inches. That is if you're using my box template cover the entire one entire side of this thing with glue and then we just gently place it in and center it you can use your uh, scoring tool to get this in here and really get those edges nice And there we go, there we have the top of the box. And you can see that the bottom of the box doesn't look done, because it's not. However, if yours are just for display, you could skip this next part because it's just gonna sit on your shelf and all you need is the wand tag there. But mine, yes, they're for display, but they also all have wands in them. So I need that inside part and I want to do it. So we are going to mimic the inside of the official box from Noble Collection. So what we need are two pieces of foam to go on either side of where the wand rests inside the box. So I got this huge thing of like poly foam. You don't need anything this big. Small pieces will work. You could even just go to Goodwill and pick something up that has this soft foam inside of it. And just rip it open and use that but I figured I'll probably be using this in another project sometime, so I got a huge roll of it. This is what I'm gonna work with. You don't have to do that. So we're just gonna cut it down to about right there. And you can use your scissors for this. It's not important for it to be 100% perfect. And now we need to cut this into two long strips. Now, we know that the inside of this is two and a half inches wide, and the wand is probably gonna sit in about a half inch in the middle right there, right? So we just need two one inch uh, pieces of this foam. And again, if you're using a box template that's different, one that's not my box template, you're probably gonna need longer or shorter strips just depending on the size of your box. So from that foam, I have gone ahead and cut out two pieces that are about three quarters of an inch wide. That's gonna leave some room inside 
for the wand to sit in the middle. I feel like these don't have to be perfect because they're gonna be covered with fabric anyway and you're not gonna see any of those like imperfections or the lines where I was drawing on them to get them the right size as I cut. Now, the next thing we need to do are the ribbons. I couldn't find any ribbon that's exactly like this, so I just grabbed some fabric that was very similar and uh, just looked kind of cool, so that's what we're gonna be using. It's right here, and obviously it is a bit uh, darker than what they, what they used, but it's, it's pretty cool, and if we double it up like this, you can see it a lot better, so I will be doubling it up. And we just need a strip of this that is about uh, two and a half inches wide. I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold it over on itself like this. So now I've got it doubled up and it's short enough for me to work with. And it's getting glitter on everything, but you know, whatever. And then, like I said, we need two and a half inch wide pieces. And I will put a little paperweight right there to hold it down. And now I'll use my rotary cutter to cut this. That'll be a lot easier. So now we've got one strip and we need two like this doubled up. The next thing we need to use is this fabric fuse tape. And it is this double-sided tape used on fabric and it's wonderful, it's permanent tape. Um, so you wanna go ahead and cut off a couple pieces of these that are close to two and a half inches and put them both right here on the inside of the bottom of your box. And then you wanna get in there and peel the backing off of that tape. And that's gonna leave the sticky part exposed in there. We'll do that on both sides. And then we can take where the part is kinda of like folded over on itself right there. When I cut it, I had it folded in half, like I said. And take that part and we will just stick it down onto that tape. And we will cut these down to size a little bit later if we need to, but for now, just leave them like this. Next, we worry about the inside of the box. The fabric I chose is this red to kind of match the red that's in the official box. And I cut a piece that was too big for the box, obviously. We want it to be too big to work with. We just wanna make sure that we can sort of tuck it in between those pieces of foam and still have some kind of overlapping the outside of the box. That way we can cover everything up. I thought about what the easiest way would be <laughs> to actually get the fabric on here in the right size for the box and everything. So I've come up with something that I think is probably, at least for me, the easiest way to do it. So um, I've just put some clamps on these pieces of fabric that are kind of flowing out from the box just to keep them out of the way as we do this. And what we wanna do is get some fabric fuse tape and then we're going to put a couple of pieces on here. We're gonna put one across the top of each one of these. And then we're gonna put another long strip on the insides of these pieces that are facing each other. So just right on the inside parts. Okay, so there we go. Now with one of these, we're going to take the adhesive off of the top, the protective sheet that is off the top, and we are going to stick the top just right on this fabric leaving a little bit of extra fabric to fold over like this. Smooth that out, make sure there's no wrinkles. And then we can take the next piece of protective paper off the adhesive, and then we'll just fold it over on itself, but make sure there's no wrinkles. And there we go. Place that side into the box. And then we have this piece, <laughs> um, that's gonna go right here. So the idea here is go ahead and keep this, the like side that's facing it, keep that covered with the protective sheet, but then peel the top protective sheet off of this next one. And this is where we have to be very careful because you don't want the fabric to touch and start sticking to the top yet. 
we just kind of want to fold it in, tuck it in, make sure there's enough room in there for the fabric to sit. And then maybe with just the middle part of this, we are going to, whoops, I'm gluing or taping myself to this. We're going to fold it over just like that, make sure that the rest of it doesn't go. And now we know exactly where that should be. We can glue it the rest of the way or tape it, I, I, would, I should say. And right now I'm just trying to work out the wrinkles. Double check, make sure it's all gonna fit. And yes, it looks like that's gonna fit nicely in there. Now we can take that other part of adhesive protection off. And then we can fold it over toward the middle Make sure it's nice and smooth, no wrinkles, and there we go. But we still got these edges that look weird, the ends. So for these, we're going to just see where this crease is and then right where it ends and we have this loose fabric, we're just gonna sort of pull that fabric out and make it we, so we can see if that kept going, this is where it would be. And right where we see, that's where it would keep going we're going to cut in toward that corner all the way to the corner, just like this. Do that at all four corners. And with all four of those cut, now we have this piece that just is kind of hanging out there. Cut it off, just cut it completely off. Get two pieces or I guess I should say four to go for all four of these, but you want, I guess, four pieces of adhesive tape, tape about this big, and then just put it on the ends, all four ends of these. Now we can take the protective sheet off, and then we take this part and just fold it over on top. So it should look about like that. We'll do that on all four sides. All right, so now with all four of those done, uh, this excess that kind of comes off the edge here, we can go ahead and trim. Now we are at a point where we are actually ready to put this in here. We are at the home stretch right now. So we're gonna use fabric fuse tape now about these extra like little flappy pieces, we want to tape those down too. So we're going to take fabric fuse and use that to tape those in. So get that fabric fuse tape under, underneath that fabric and then we can use that to sort of tighten that fabric around the uh, foam and, and just tape it down. It doesn't matter if this part has wrinkles in it really because it's going to be facing in toward the edges here and you're never going to see it so it's not a big deal. Now we have this and this is ready to go into our box. So let's take these clamps off and we are going to want some tape in here, obviously. We want one strip that's gonna fit all the way down here. And we're actually gonna want three of those strips about the same size that can stretch all the way down the middle. And then the last one will stretch all the way down this side right here. There we go. And now we already have pieces kind of on the sides here that are sticky. So those should kind of stick to the edges as well. So let's go ahead and try this just like this. So we will start with just one side. So I'm going to start with this side and we're going to place it in and then it goes down and just sort of make sure it goes in properly.
at this point you can even use your scoring tool to get in there and get all those edges nice and sharp work out wrinkles and then the wand you can make sure the wand fits in there and it should yeah it fits quite nicely in there and then it's just a matter of trimming down these ribbon pieces so I'm gonna trim mine down just about right to the end of this box and then we're gonna do the same on this other side the box lid now goes right on top and there is one last thing to do we get to decide which label we want on the wand box. For this box, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this one just cause it's kind of darker and stands out a little bit more. I'm just gonna cut it out with my scissors. We'll just use a little bit of a glue stick on the back and glue the label right on the end of this, this wand box right here. And when we put it all together in the end, we should have the label, the box, all finished. We open this up. And then we have these ribbony parts that move away. The nice cloth interior here of the box. And then the wand comes out right there. Let me know what you guys thought of this wand box tutorial. I think it turned out looking really nice. I am going to be giving away this wand box as well as this uh, Unique Wands brand wand. I don't know if you can get these anymore. This one is called the Lupus Wand and it has a werewolf on it right there. And then here's the card that tells all about it. And I will also be sending the card along with it in the box. So. If this is a giveaway that you're interested in, there is a link in the description box below to that giveaway. While you're down there, why don't you go ahead and comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know um, if you had any success doing anything that I did only in a different way. But yeah, there you go. That is the wand box tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.